Hey, it's Jeff Chan from MMA Shredded, and today I'm going to be testing out four different guards in my sparring. The turtle guard, the long guard, the hands down guard, and the Philly shell guard. Now, I personally like to mix all four guards whenever I'm sparring or fighting, but for the purpose of this video, I'll be doing four rounds of sparring, and in each round, I'll be using one specific guard and talking about the pros or the cons. If you like this video, please remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. So the first guard on the list is our typical high guard. Knuckles are up by the eyebrows and tight to the head. Now regardless of what guard you use, you can still attack or counter with the same techniques you like, but depending on the guard you are using, I would say specific offensive techniques and counters are easier to pull off. For example, in our high guard here, it is easier to pressure forward to get into the pocket of your opponent. Moving into your opponent's pocket means you are in striking range for both parties to hit. So, the higher and tighter the guard, the higher chance you can cover up for punches. FYI, my hands should be much tighter than what you are seeing me do right now. The high guard is definitely one of my weakest guards. The high guard is great for being very aggressively offensive, but in my opinion, not so great defensively. Because your gloves are tight to your head, not only can it blur your vision, but it is more difficult to keep your distance and stay just outside of striking range. And if your opponent can get into your pocket and throw one punch, that causes you to tighten up slash shell up, then the second punch will cause you to hold even tighter and so on, allowing your opponent to just tee off of you. Now imagine wearing MMA gloves or no gloves. These punches are going to hurt even if you're blocking and even worse, slip through the cracks of your guard. Round two here, I use the long guard. As you can see, my lead hand is further out and my lead arm is three quarters extended. This nearly extended lead arm helps us stay on the outside of striking range. If my opponent steps within that lead arm radius, I know I can hit my opponent and therefore counter. As you can see here, my opponent moved within my lead arm and I countered with my cross. With that said, that also means I can get hit and you can see me ready to block and back away with footwork to get back on the outside. Because the long guard keeps us both outside of striking range, we often use explosive long range attacks like the spinning back kick, the darting cross, the double step low kick, push kicks, low kicks, and so on. Going back to countering, because our lead arm is further away, throwing my jab or lead hook is also much faster because my hand is already halfway out instead of launching the punch from my face. You'll see that I often parry and counter with the left hook or parry and throw that cross, then circle out. If my opponent is not really being aggressive and instead using the long guard, I try to parry his punch, then blitz in with punches to stay in striking range. But a beautiful check left hook counter from my partner Fred here. When my opponent moves within my lead arm, I also like to intercept them with that lead roundhouse kick to the body. Before we continue, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online platform where professionals can create classes and people can pay a subscription to learn about several topics such as design, marketing, video, and more. You might be interested in vlogging your own martial arts journey like me, so there are a lot of resources on this platform for that. The specific class I took is called Video Editing with Adobe Premiere Pro for Beginners, taught by Jordi Van De Put. Some of you may have noticed a huge difference in my editing. I normally rely on Final Cut Pro, but I've just started incorporating Adobe Premiere to my videos. It can take a long time to learn how to use a new editing program, but this class quickly taught me what I needed. Skillshare is created specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Round 3. The Hands Down Guard Now just wanted to remind everyone that I usually switch up my guard depending on the situation and I'm only trying to keep my hands down for the whole round for the purpose of this video. So the hands down guard has a similar concept to the long guard, which is keeping your distance and using your vision to counter. The difference is that you are using mostly head movement to defend. Using head movement is much easier with your hands down because you don't have your arms weighing your head down when you move. Countering with head movement is faster than other counters because you can simultaneously move your head and strike instead of blocking and then striking. When your hands are down, sometimes it can slow down the pace because your opponent knows that you are taunting them and that you are ready to counter as soon as they take the bait and try to punch your head. It makes your opponent scared to throw big boxing combinations because they know after they throw the first punch, a counter punch is coming from you. So they end up throwing one punch and leaning back to avoid getting countered. 
And when we have two fighters that play the hands down game, sometimes we have a staring contest. We see who makes the first move, and it becomes a big game of take. If you go first, it's punch, dodge, and try to counter. With that said, keeping her hand down poses the highest risk, and I totally just ate a high kick here. Before playing around with your hands down, you need to be very comfortable with managing your distance. And round 4, I used the Philly Shell Guard. As most of you already know, it is a guard used in pure boxing. Again, I like to mix up the guard, but for the purpose of this round, I am only using the Philly Shell. Great for defending punches, but not so good when there are kicks and takedowns involved. So you can imagine I don't use it very often, but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't use it in certain situations. You can see because I'm using the Philly shell, my partner is landing more low kicks and going for more takedowns. So what is your favorite guard? Let me know in the comments below and if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like, subscribe and turn on that notification button.